Welcome to Dory Cody on Shamanism, a weekly podcast that explores one theme in shamanism throughout each month. Get comfortable, have a seat, and let's get started. Welcome to my podcast. This is Dory Cody, and we're going to talk today in a question and answer format on the topic of omens in your home. This is the third in a series of podcasts on the topic of omens, and next time we will talk about omens when you're traveling. But today we're talking about omens in your home, and I encourage you to sit and listen as some questions get fielded to me and I provide you some answers. Dory, how are omens at home different from omens in nature or in dreams? Omens in your home are often a little bit more elusive to the average person. But as you begin to explore and be far more open to the whole concept of omens as you work with them in nature and in your dreams, you may become aware that you are beginning to see things differently than you have in the past, that you're working not just with your human eyes, but with your third eye, and you begin to see patterns emerge in things that you have not noticed before. For instance, let's say you live in a home that has a lot of wood in it, and you're sitting on your couch, and you're just kind of daydreaming, and you look over to the wood floor, for instance, and all of a sudden, you see in the pattern of one of the boards in the floor the amazing image of of an arrowhead. You've never noticed it before. It's been there all the years you've lived in this home, and today, something that you've looked at many, many, many times is clearly in the shape of an arrowhead. So that I would see as an omen. Why are you seeing an arrowhead today? Why is that? What is that about? And so it would stop me to pay attention and and muse about, hmm, what does an arrowhead mean to me? Uh, Does it mean I'm meant to pay attention to my, any Native American roots or Native American traditions? Does it mean that there's some arrows that are being pointed at me that I need to pay attention to or that I need to stop sending arrows to other people? What is it? Why are you all of a sudden seeing an arrowhead? And the same can be true with any object in your home. For instance, you might have plants you know, house plants. And again, you know, this usually happens when you're sitting still and maybe daydreaming, you know, looking at things with soft eyes rather than with intent of studying something, but just being in a very relaxed state and allowing your your imagination to just kind of be in. And all of a sudden you see a pattern in one of the house plants imagery of of an ant or the imagery of the infinity symbol or some other symbol that may be really obvious to you. It could be something as simple as, oh my God, why is there an obvious shape of a little woven basket in this leaf on this plant? I've never noticed that before. That's a real curiosity. That is just, uh, and then allow yourself to just go with that gaze and, you know, using your imagination and your inquiring mind, investigate. Well, why? I wonder what that is. Why am I seeing that today? I've looked at that many, many times before, but I've never seen that. What does that mean? How is that? Why is that appearing to me today? And how is it playing? in uh, a role in anything that I'm feeling or thinking or wondering about right now. That's the kind of way omens in your home are likely to play with you. And so they don't have to be natural objects. They can very definitely be 
inanimate objects that take on a particular shape or form that has never been apparent to you before and uh, may not be apparent to you again. You might come back and look at it a half hour later and say, how did I see that? Because I'm not seeing it now. That again is another reason to muse about, (laughs) isn't that a curiosity that so obviously looked to me like the shape of an ant just a bit ago or the shape of an arrowhead just a bit ago and now I can't see that again. So there's a reason why that symbol or that shape appear to you that you need to be paying attention to. So in nature omens, it was the nature energies that were communicating. And in omens in the house, is it the spirit of the house that's communicating to us or is it our guide? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. I, you know, my sense is that spirit helpers or spirit guides uh, are collaborating with the objects in our home to allow us to see something that we need to see in that moment. So it isn't the spirit of the house as such or the spirit of, you know, particularly an inanimate object, but truly more the spirit of our own spirits, our spirit helpers, our spirit guides who are working with us and manipulating what we're able to see in order to get a message to us. So they're using shapes and forms and our capacity to envision something that we weren't able to see before and envision it in a new way so that we receive a message from it. It could be the spirit of the house. I mean, I I wouldn't discount that, particularly if you have a really strong relationship with your home because our homes do have a spirit. And the spirit of the home itself could be communicating with you about something it needs or wants, something that needs to be changed. Perhaps that arrowhead that you saw in um, in the wood floor is a message about something that you need to pay attention to with regard to the floor or the way that you're walking on the floor or something that the floor needs from you around care. It's all about getting our attention so that we stop and look and listen, just like you learned as a child about crossing the railroad track stop, look, and listen, and pay attention. The message is coming to you for a reason, and your job is to pay attention. So sometimes the energy of a room can spiral down and needs to be picked up. It needs to be cleared or it needs to be decluttered, and that's not the same as an omen, if I'm understanding you correctly. An omen is more of a communication coming to us that we didn't necessarily, a conversation that's starting that we didn't necessarily begin. Is that correct? That's absolutely true. And it is also possible that we launched the communication by having, using that same scenario that you, you know, sit on your couch at home listening to some soft music and you intend to just kind of go into a daydreamy state because your your mind is tired and you just need a rest. And again, as we've spoken about before with omens in nature and omens in dreams, you you have something in your heart, something you're musing about, something you're worried about, something you're you know, that you're struggling with at this point in time or trying to understand better. And in that state of softening your eyes and being in a relaxed place, you begin to see images in the wood or, you know, in the flower, in the house plants or even in the, the way the shadows are falling across the floor uh, as, as the light comes through the windows or anything like that, that begin to speak to you. And you realize that those images are coming to speak to you in in direct response to what you're musing about right now. 
And so there is an intention that, you know, you can have an intentionality and get omens, responses from omens in your own home without a doubt. But often they just come uh, sort of surprisingly. The suds in the bottom of the dish pan take on a particular shape as you drain the water out of the dish pan or the cuttings from the cucumbers that you just sliced have a form in them and you, you recognize it. And all of those things are just speaking to you in some interesting way. As I said, again, it's, it's about really opening your heart and opening your mind. But it, it truly is not about a room needing attention or something needing decluttering or there being some kind of energy in a room that needs your attention. It's really it's a much bigger... It's about how the spirits are communicating with you directly about something that pertains to you, that some action you need to take or some new direction you might need or some magic, perhaps, that you need in your life. Perhaps the whole reason that you're seeing the shape of a ladybug in your wood floor all of a sudden is because you need a little awe in your life. And seeing the shape of a ladybug in your wood floor puts you in a state of complete and utter awe. And that's the gift. That's the message. Oh, lighten up, girl. It's time for you to experience awe. It doesn't have to be some big, meaningful thing. It it can be very playful. It can also be incredibly joyful. Interesting you should mention ladybugs because I have an infestation of Asian ladybugs and I thought it was spring. So how can you tell the difference between, and that would be a combination of a house omen and nature omen, or just a changing of the seasons when insects want to get warmth? Yes, okay, so again, great question. I would not interpret the visitation of a whole lot of ladybugs as an omen. I would see the appearance of a whole lot of ladybugs in my home as more of a visitation of the spirit of the ladybug herself. And what is ladybug saying to you? What does ladybug need? Why is ladybug inside your house? And what response does ladybug need from you? So obviously when the ladybugs take over and you have more of them in your home than what you're really comfortable with, as a human, you need to decide how you're going to interact with that. You you need to take some action. As a shaman who is a dear friend of mine who since passed over used to say, you know, when the mosquitoes come into the house, then they're fair game for me. I do swat them. You know, so, you know, the, the, the ladybugs have made a space in your home and there comes a point where that might not be comfortable. So it's important for you to begin exploring. Okay, ladybug, ladybug, what do you want from me? Why are you here? How do I work with you? And how do I help you find a new home which is outside of these walls? And when you begin to get your answer about why Ladybug has come, because there's a message Ladybug is bringing to you without a doubt, once you get that answer, then Ladybugs might just go on their own, and if they don't, then you lovingly scoop them up and move them out, knowing that in doing that, you're also honoring why they have come to you, that you got the message and now... Thank you very much for coming to give me this message, and now it's time for you to take your leave outside of my home. Are there any other messages you want to give us about omens at home or working with them? No, I I really, I think that we have covered this quite well. I appreciate all your questions, and let's prepare for next week when we talk about omens while we're traveling. Thank you for your wonderful questions. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to Dory Cody on Shamanism. We'd love to hear your thoughts, stories, reactions, and questions. Come on over to DoryCody.com and join the conversation. And tune in next week for more on this subject or next month for a new subject. You can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or sign up on DoryCody.com to receive notices when the podcasts are posted. That's Dory, D-O-R-Y, and Cody, C-O-T-E, dot com. Drumming and Rattling by Dory Cody and Terry Morgan. Technical Assistance and Audio Production by JillHackett.com. And this is Susan Savell, wishing you many blessings in your life. We hope to have you join us next time.